In this guide, you're going to learn how you can win lane in the first three minutes as an AD carry. Check out our skill cap challenger expert, 6AX. It's two minutes in the game. He spikes level two first and immediately all ins while the enemy is still level one and gets first blood. Completely different game, same idea. It's two minutes, spikes level two first and gets first blood. Now a different challenger expert, Evnis, it's two minutes in the game, spikes level two, gets the enemy's flash and the lane is over. Now, you might be thinking, you're just showing me standard level 2 all-ins, so what's the big deal here? Well, when we originally set out to make this guide, we wanted to compile a list of the worst mistakes AD carries make in solo queue that cause them to lose lane. However, after coming through dozens and dozens of replays ranging from gold to high diamond, something became very apparent. Over 90% of AD carries just lose their lane in the first 3 minutes. And what we found was that this was due to the exact same reason, they really don't understand how to play the first 3 levels of the game. As a quick side note, this guide comes directly from the only place that has a rank up guarantee because it works, skill capped. Learn more at the end of this guide. So if you want to start crushing your lane like a challenger smurf, it all begins with this one fundamental concept. When you enter lane level 1 as an AD carry, you have one singular goal. Every single time, pretty much no matter what, it's to get the push advantage. By a push advantage, we simply mean have more minions alive than the enemy. By doing this, you will create two possible strategies for you to implement. The first is the most exciting and is the level 2 all-in we showed earlier. By getting the push advantage on the first wave, more enemy minions are dead, we have the experience lead and so we hit level 2 on the second wave because of this, while the enemy is still level 1 and it sets up easy kills. The second is more strategic, where you execute what's called a cheater recall. A cheater recall is actually much simpler than it sounds. Again, you want to get the push advantage on the first wave. You can see here as the second wave comes in, Lucian is ahead 3 caster minions on Samira. You then execute what's called a slow push. You do this by not damaging the minions except to last hit. Since you already have more minions at this point, they will naturally do more damage, increasing your minion advantage very slowly over time without you having to damage the wave directly. One important key to achieving a slow push is that you're zoning the enemy champions to prevent them from damaging the minions back with their auto attacks or spells. And this is why getting that push advantage at level 1 is so important as an AD carry. You will either spike level 2 first or threaten the level 2 spike, which then zones the enemy from the wave since they will still be level 2. You can then use this timing window to only last it, and slow push the wave causing a much bigger wave than normal to build up over time. Then once that third wave arrives, which can be recognized by there being a siege minion, you then hard push or what's called crashing the large wave by damaging the minions as much as you can. This large wave that you crash into the enemy tower then buys you the extra time needed to recall, get an item advantage, and head back to lane without losing practically any CS. And from a high level, the first 3 minutes of the game are really that simple. Your goal as an AD carry is to get the push advantage level 1, and then either execute a level 2 all in, or a cheater recall on the third wave. And yet, despite this sounding really easy, over 90% of AD carries from gold to diamond still fail to do this. Why? Well, let's find out for ourselves. Here's a gold Tristana, she enters lane and is able to get the push advantage at level 1. She has 3 more minions heading into the second wave. Now if I were to ask you in this moment, should you go for the level 2 all in, or execute that cheater recall? I bet that you wouldn't know the right answer. In fact, not knowing this answer is why you're failing to win lane as an AD carry. So let me explain, in order to execute a level 2 all in, we often want to start damaging the 3 melee minions of the second wave as fast as we can. This is what lets us hit level 2 as early as possible, and is what catches the enemy off guard and lets you get a kill. If instead you look to execute a cheater recall, you will build up a slow push on the second wave, and this gives the enemy a lot more time to realize they have a minion disadvantage and that you're going to spike level 2 on them. What this means is that when executing a cheater recall, you often lose the element of surprise and miss out on potential level 2 all-ins. However, if we do go for a level 2 all-in instead, well, we immediately damage the second wave. We then give up the opportunity to execute a cheater recall, since we'll have damaged the wave too much, push the wave too fast, and be unable to build up a big enough wave to then recall. Just compare the state of the second wave between these two strategies, and you can notice what I'm talking about. So for these reasons, on the second wave, you basically have to decide, am I going for a level 2 all-in? If the answer is yes, you kill the first three melees as fast as you can to spike level 2. Or are you going to do a cheater recall? If yes, then you zone the enemy, only last it, and let a big wave naturally build up. And this is where the majority of players fail. Firstly, they're not even aware this decision exists at this moment in time. And secondly, they don't understand how to identify which is the right choice. But don't worry, Skillcapped has you covered, as it's actually quite simple to make the correct decision consistently. In this replay, Zaya got the push advantage on the first wave. 
The second wave now has arrived. Notice how the enemy is fighting back. They're looking for trades and damaging the minions. This means they're much closer to you since they're auto-attacking minions or looking for trades, which means they're in range to engage once you hit level 2. They're also more distracted and focused on last hitting and damaging minions, letting you catch them off guard. It also means a cheater recall simply won't work, as you can't just slow push in this scenario since if you stand there and do nothing, they'll eventually thin out the wave enough that you lose your push advantage. So when the enemy starts trying to fight back on that second wave, it signals to you to kill the melees as fast as you can to spike level 2 and go for the all-in. That seems simple enough, but what if the second wave arrives and the enemy is playing extremely passive and safe, not damaging the wave or going for trades? Well, in this case, there's no reason to rush down the melee minions and spike level 2, as the enemy is signaling to us that they're just going to play too safe for us to engage on them. In this scenario, you punish their safe play by executing a cheater recall and getting an item advantage. Alright, so we're now going to test you on what you just learned with real solo queue examples, but first, let's quickly recap. As an AD carry, your goal is to get the push advantage on the first wave. Once you achieve this and the second wave arrives, you then decide whether to execute a level 2 all-in or a cheater recall. Go for the level 2 all-in by rushing down the melee minions if the enemy is trying to contest your push and is fighting against you. Go for the cheater recall if the enemy is playing safe and passive. Alright, so let's go back to that gold Tristana. You get to lane, get the push advantage on the first wave, great. Now, the second wave arrives and it's time for you to make a decision. Should you go for the level 2 all-in or a cheater recall? We can see the enemy Samira is fighting back against us by damaging the minions, so we know to go for a level 2 all-in. We now want to damage the melees as fast as possible, and we can see Tristana doing this, and yet she spikes level 2 first and is unable to do anything with it. Why is this? Well, let's rewind. She does a good job damaging the first two melees as fast as she can, but then suddenly swaps to kill a caster minion instead of just rushing down the last melee minion. It's three melee minions, not two melees and one caster, that will spike you level 2 on the second wave. And so you can see how this buys the enemy those extra few seconds to recognize they're going to get level 2 all in, so they start playing much safer. Now let's check out a gold Ezreal. He arrives in lane and is able to get the push advantage at level 1. The second wave arrives, we now know it's time to make the decision. So do we go for the level 2 all in, or a cheater recall in this scenario? Again, we go for the level 2 all in. We can see Ash is fighting back against us by auto attacking the minion wave. Ezreal needs to be laser focused on damaging these three melees as fast as possible. Instead, what do we see? He barely damages the wave at all, not recognizing the level 2 all-in opportunity. Even worse is that the enemy Ash still falls for the level 2 all-in anyways, just showing how strong the strategy is, and then Ezreal doesn't even engage despite being level 2 to her level 1. Moving on, we have a gold Kai'Sa. She arrives in lane and is able to get the push advantage level 1. Great. The second wave arrives, and now let's pause. Should we go for the level 2 all-in or a cheater recall? The enemy Senna is scared and playing very passive and safe. We should let the wave slow push, only last hit, and go for a cheater recall. And we can actually see a gold Kai'Sa doing this. Very impressive. However, the third wave arrives and she doesn't hard push and crash the wave as fast as possible. She's actually completely unaware she has a cheater recall available. And so the wave naturally fizzles out on the tower and the lane is pretty much even with no advantage gained. Now we have a Diamond Samira. She arrives in lane, and after a bit of fighting, secures the push advantage at level 1. The second wave arrives, and so let's pause and make our decision. Should we go for the level 2 all-in, or a cheater recall? We see the enemy is scared, and now playing safe and passive, not contesting our minion advantage, and so we should execute a cheater recall. And yet, what does this diamond player do? She doesn't let it slow push, instead killing the melees as fast as possible, going for a level 2 all-in. And here is a great example of why you don't want to do this. The enemy was playing safe, and so there's no all-in available. And so now she's pushed the wave too fast, the minion wave gets within tower range, killing her melees. Additionally, she wasn't able to build up as many minions compared to if she slow pushed. Executing a cheater recall is no longer possible. Her minion wave is much smaller than it needs to be. The wave is also much closer to the enemy's tower, meaning she can't zone them while she crashes the wave, letting them push back and thin out the wave from safety. This actually results in her getting frozen on and falling behind 10 CS at the 4 minute mark. So as you can see, these two strategies we're teaching you are really the main determining factors on who wins the lane. Now, we here at Skillcapped want to be clear. You're not going to be able to execute these strategies every single game no matter what. However, well over 50% of all games you play as an AD carry, you should be able to use this and get a significant advantage off of it that you can then use to snowball. 
However, there are two situations that you will run into that will prevent you from being able to execute what you've learned. First is if the enemy is aware of the importance of getting the push advantage and fights for level 2 as soon as they get into lane. Assuming both bot lane matchups have similar levels of wave clear, this often results in both hitting level 2 at the same time. This keeps the lane neutral, and you now transition into more standard laning, trading, and wave clear concepts. This is perfectly fine though, and is actually a sign that you're improving. It means you fought for level 2 and kept the lane neutral instead of just giving the advantage to the enemy like 90% of AD carries in solo queue. The second situation is when you lose the push advantage. Sometimes you have the weaker wave clear in the bot lane matchup, and so despite trying your best to hit level 2 first, the enemy simply outpushes you. That's okay, and this happens sometimes. It's important though that you don't fall for the level 2 all in. Instead, look to play safe and passive. 99% of players you face in solo queue won't know to execute a cheater recall in this scenario, and so you'll be able to just play safe, let the wave crash, equalize in levels, and play the lane out from a neutral state moving forward. Alright guys, before we recap, as promised, I just want to quickly talk about how crazy our rank up guarantee is over at skillcapped.com. If you don't climb 5 divisions while actively using skillcapped, you can get your money back. That's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. They'd go bust if they offered that, right? Well, not us. We've offered this for years because our service works, and if it doesn't, don't pay. Check us out today for access to over 1900 guides, 750 live smurf commentaries, and instant coaching. Alright, so let's quickly recap what you've learned. Your goal as an AD carry when you first enter lane is to get the push advantage on the first wave. Once this is achieved, and the second wave arrives, you have to decide whether to execute a level 2 all-in or a cheater recall. If the enemy is fighting back against you at this moment, either by damaging the minions or trying to trade, look to execute a level 2 all-in by killing the 3 melee minions as fast as you can and catching them by surprise. If the enemy is instead playing safe and passive, then slow push by only last hitting. Then, once the third wave arrives, which has a siege minion in it, hard push the wave to crash it, and then recall and return to lane with an item advantage. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching, good luck on the rift, and we'll catch you in the next one.